What's up fellas, Angel here, your cosmetic chemist with Self-Aware Care, and today we're gonna to be talking about growing the beard of your dreams with minoxidil, or just growing really nice stubble, getting that Viking, manly, like warrior beard that you've always wanted. Fall's just around the corner, and I think every man, whether they're gonna keep a beard or not, wishes that they could at least have the capability of growing one. So we're gonna talk exactly how to do that here, so that you don't look like this, and you look more like this. Here's a little bit of my before and after so you can see that exactly what I've talked about today works. I've used it myself and I would say I had about somewhere in the area of 30%-ish increased hair growth as a result of doing minoxidil. So let's get to it. So number one, let's start with minoxidil. It's known for helping you grow more hair on your head. It's a growth agonist. And it really works anywhere that you want to grow more hair that is capable of growing hair and has hair follicles. So if you wanted just like sick, burly, bare arms, you could totally do that. I like to use it personally on my eyebrows for thick, full eyebrows, as well as the facial hair. And what is awesome about using it for facial hair that really makes this stand out is normally when you apply this on the hair on your head, once you stop using it after three to maybe four weeks, the hairs that were relying on minoxidil to grow start to shed and fall out. Whereas when you use it on your face, the vellus hairs, which is like the peach fuzz, the things that are the hairs that are kind of hard to see, but they're there, they start developing into terminal hairs, which is like the thick, full hairs that you want. And for some reason, they don't all go away once you stop using it. So if you do this for anywhere from six months to two years, the majority of what you gained during that time, you will be able to keep. There's plenty and plenty of anecdotes basically showing this. And so what you're gonna wanna do is get minoxidil, it comes in a foam form or a liquid form, get 5%. I personally love the liquid form. I think it's easier to apply and there's some things that you can mix in with it. However, some people do get irritation from this. It is about 60% alcohol, 35% propylene glycol, and 5% minoxidil. So it can be irritating the alcohol can dry out some people's skin the foam form tends to be a little bit more mild and just a little bit better for that but you'll want to apply it to the areas that you want to grow facial hair don't worry so much about like touching other parts of your body and just growing hair like crazy if you're not getting you know a good amount of it in that area consistently you're not going to grow hair there and when you put it on and apply it in the area you'll want to keep it on for at least one hour that gives you about 50% absorption. Four hours is gonna get you around 75%. So ideally we're targeting around eight hours for the majority of the absorption. The half-life of this is 22 hours, but even regardless of that, studies and lots of anecdotes have found that using it twice a day is better than using it once a day. I found that myself as well. I started off using it twice a day and then tapered down to once a day. But even if you're just using it once a day, you're gonna get excellent results, I promise you. A big question that comes with minoxidil is how do you incorporate this into your skincare routine? And fellas, please, 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 please have a skincare routine. I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone trying to grow like their, this beard and they're posting about it and then they just have this horrible, horrible skin that is so avoidable by having anywhere of a decent skincare routine. And really having a good skincare routine can avoid some like flakiness and dry skin, irritated skin that some people do get from minoxidil because once that skin barrier is compromised, if you keep putting on more stuff, it's more likely to continue to get more and more compromised. So I highly recommend using a good moisturizer when you're using something like minoxidil just to keep that, that barrier nice and intact. Side effect wise, everything is extremely minor unless you have some sort of a heart condition, then it could impact that. So that's something to be on the lookout for. But other than that, it's primarily things like irritation. Some people will have increased water retention. There's uh, potential for unwanted hair growth in some areas. And some people will get like darker circles around the eyes. This stuff isn't permanent. It will go away either upon continued use or from discontinuing the use. So it's not a big deal if that happens. If you like what you're hearing so far, be sure to give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. There's gonna be tons of more awesome content coming right at you. As for the time that you can expect from minoxidil, you can expect to see results anywhere from two to three months in is where it really starts to, to be like apparent. And then the results really start coming in around six months to nine months. I find that past that point for a lot of people, there really isn't much of a difference unless they're making major tweaks to the routine, like adding things that they weren't doing before. And so the next one is going to be tretinoin. So let's say that you have tried minoxidil and you're not getting any results. 
So this happens because you are lacking the enzyme that is gonna convert minoxidil into its usable form, which is minoxidil sulfate. And this is the sulfotransferase enzyme. And so what tretinoin actually does is it upregulates that enzyme and in studies was found to convert the majority of non-responders into responders as a result. And one of the great things is that this isn't something that you know you have to have tretinoin on at the same time that you have minoxidil on. It's something that will occur after you've applied the tretinoin for you know 24 hours, 48 hours, and so forth. So first off, when using tretinoin, you're gonna wanna be careful with this just because it is, uh, one, it's the, one of the best things that you can use for anti-aging. So even if you're not using this for your beard, you should definitely hop on using this. It's basically the best that's out there for generating collagen keeping the skin looking nice, preventing acne, all of those sorts of things. Basically, when you use this, you'll wanna start off using it at a dose of, if you could get a hold of it, 0.01 or 0.025, up to maybe 0.05. You can get it from your doctor. You just ask for it, it's pretty easy to get a hold of. You can also order it like online from like a Canadian pharmacy or something like that. And worst case, if you can't get a hold of it, um, retinol that you can get in pretty much any product, skincare product that has it, converts into retinol with an A, which is retinaldehyde, and that converts into retinoic acid, which is the same thing as tretinoin. And so while the conversion rate of that is unknown, and the extent to which this would upregulate sulfotransferase is unknown, it would still technically have an impact on upregulating that enzyme, even if you were just using a plain retinol. So that's an option for you. So start off using this like once a week, twice a week, and slowly step it up until you can start doing it every day or every other day. And you're gonna see good benefit to your facial hair growth as a result. Side effect wise with tretinoin, you're pretty much just looking at irritation. Most people at one point or another do get some level of irritation from tretinoin. It's nothing to worry about. Just back off of it from a little bit. Like it's okay that it's not gonna, absolutely murder your gains if you just take a step back from it from a little bit to give your skin time to recover if you are getting a level of irritation from it this will be one you'll feel it but two this is where you might see a little bit of redness or like flaky skin and sometimes it will make your skin a little bit dry so it's good to be using things like a moisturizer with this what you can do when using tretinoin is either apply it before your minoxidil or after your minoxidil it's not a big deal which way you do it Ideally, you're not applying them at the same time because the alcohol and the minoxidil can help the tretinoin penetrate a little bit too deeply, and that is more likely to cause irritation. What I personally do is I will apply my minoxidil, wait about 10 minutes for it to dry, then I'll apply my tretinoin over the top, but there's nothing wrong with applying the tretinoin first, waiting 15, 20 minutes plus, and then applying the minoxidil over the top. And if you are having irritation issues with the tretinoin, you could always apply a moisturizer and then apply your tretinoin and then apply your minoxidil or moisturizer, minoxidil, tretinoin. That'll help kind of make it a little bit more mild. Now, the next piece I wanna get into is microneedling. And again, microneedling is awesome even outside of beard growth benefits. It's great for generating more collagen in the skin and making you look really damn good. So you can get a microneedling device. You can get derma rollers really cheap on eBay. They're really like, don't need, no need to spend a ton of money on these. The most important thing when you're doing this is being hygienic. So wash your face, clean the skin. Ideally you are using like an alcohol wipe, even though it can be drying, it is going to like help keep the skin clean the same way a doctor would do it when they're giving you shots. And when you use the roller, if you're using a roller, you're gonna go up one, two, three, horizontal, one, two, three, and you're gonna use that to cover the full area of your facial hair. After that, you really wanna start thinking about the aftercare, and so that's gonna be using something like Vaseline. I don't recommend applying other skincare products after this just because they're gonna penetrate more than what they are really intended to. And so Vaseline is gonna help your skin really stay hydrated and recover throughout the night because there's you're gonna lose water throughout the skin otherwise and you're gonna have very, very dry skin in the morning, potentially irritated. So highly recommend applying Vaseline after you've done this. With minoxidil, you're able to apply it right before you do the microneedling. That's what's been done in some studies or you could apply it right after. If you're having any issues with irritation, you could also apply it 24 hours later and you're still gonna see a good benefit from it. I personally like to use a microneedling device. You could use a Dr. Pen, I use the Derminator too. And when you use those devices, the way that you're gonna do it is kind of like this in circles back and forth. I like to do like a line, then go below, do another line of this, and do it that way. As for the microneedling depth, there is no real 
known point of what's going to be the best. There's ideas of anywhere from 0.5 to 2.5, but it's never been studied specifically for facial skin. It's been studied more so for the scalp. And there's been benefits of using lower amounts of microneedling more frequently versus higher amounts. Uh, less frequently what I would recommend since we're talking about your face skin here and nobody wants to have like a red face for two two to three days every every week or every other week or for however long you're gonna do this for so I would recommend going on the lower side if you're seeing pinpoint bleeding which is gonna be when you pierce the dermis that means that you're gonna be getting really good absorption and really good benefits and for men that's typically around anywhere from 0.6 millimeters to one millimeter that's what I would recommend. Don't overdo it, don't kill your skin. If you're still with me and you haven't liked and subscribed, go do it now. Now this extra tip I don't hear very much, so there's an amino acid called L-carnitine, L-tartrate, and if you add in about 2% of that to minoxidil, so this is uh, for a liquid 60 milliliters, so 2% is about 1.2 grams, which is about a little bit more than a third of a teaspoon. You add that in here, you shake it up, it was found to move more hairs from the telogen phase into, which is the resting phase, into the antigen phase, which is the growth phase, improved hair growth by about 13.5%. And this is basically 27 more hairs per square centimeter. And so while this isn't like 200% more hair growth or anything crazy, it's still a great tool to add to your toolkit to maximize everything and get the most growth that you can. There was a little bit of a conflict of interest on the study. However, I feel really good about recommending this to you, not only based off of the anecdotes that I've seen of people getting results from this, but also there's pretty much no side effects to do this and it's dirt cheap to add this to your minoxidil, so might as well. So if we bring it all together, we have tretinoin, minoxidil with L-carnitine L-tartrate, and then microneedling. And so the minoxidil is one to two X a day, the tretinoin you're increasing the frequency slowly to get to daily. And then for the microneedling, you're doing it once a week, once every other week, or uh, once a month. It's not a big deal. And so what's nice with this too is you do not need to overthink implementing this with an existing skincare routine because I'll get questions a lot about, you know, can I use it with this serum? What about this one? Should I use it before or after? So first off, it isn't a big deal what the order is. It's not gonna make that big of an impact. What I would recommend is after you wash your skin, go ahead and apply the minoxidil and then do the rest of your skincare routine from there. It isn't gonna make a huge impact even if you did your serums before that, so just don't even worry about it. For a moisturizer wise, I get asked a lot about what's the best moisturizer. So guys, with any skincare product, there's no, or any, any product in general, there's no best product. It's all what is it's dependent on you. So what might be my favorite product might suck for you and vice versa. And so if you have a product that you've tried and it's working, it, your skin looks good, you're not having irritation, then it's good. Now to touch on a few myths and things that I've heard. So first off, you'll hear things like different types of oils can help grow the beard. Guys, a lot of that is just marketing crap and oils really aren't going to do anything. There's some questionable amounts of evidence that show things like peppermint essential oil or like rosemary oil can help but honestly who really wants to put a bunch of oil on their face and oils will be nice because if your beard is is maybe unhealthy and the hairs are breaking it can help with that but it's not really going to make or move the needle with beard growth now one common thing that i wanted to address that i hear is that DHT blockers are going to ruin your ability to grow a beard and yeah, I guess it kind of depends on how you see it But that's false in my opinion, and this is why so the study that found a link between DHT and beard growth it found a link between beard growth in a linear manner and so what linear growth means is how long the facial hair grows and how quickly it grows so even if you're taking something like finasteride which I take it's not gonna impact your ability to grow a beard. It might take you a little bit longer to get to a longer length of beard, but it's not in any way gonna impact the follicular diameter, the density of your beard, or any of that. You're still gonna be able to grow a sick beard regardless. Then a quick side note is, if you're having issues with an oxidal and it won't work for you, there's other things that you can try. I don't think that they're anywhere as effective as minoxidil, but those would be things like stemoxidine, which is another growth agonist for hair, or something like Latisse, which was primarily used for uh, eyelash growth. 
Uh, they have their own set of side effects and different types of irritation, but those are potential options if you are having issues with the minoxidil and you desperately want to be able to grow a beard. Well, that just about covers everything. If you have any questions, questions about your routine, need any help with anything, drop those in the comments below and I'll be sure to help you out with that. Appreciate you rocking with me. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.